All right. Uh, hello, class. Uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, starting our first uh, real lecture. Uh, in the uh, prior chapter, chapter A, we were just looking at um, we were just looking at uh, what philosophy is and what arguments are and so on. But in chapter B, which can be found on philo101.com, I hope you've read chapter B. It's uh, on um, that's an introduction to free will and determinism. And I'm just going to be going over basically what's in the first um, uh, first five chapters, uh, first five pages of chapter B. And it's an introduction to the problem of free will and determinism. Uh, what is the problem of free will and determinism? Well, the problem is, is that uh, sometimes in philosophy we have two incompatible or seemingly incompatible beliefs. We believe two different things that can't both simultaneously be true, or at least that's what we think. Uh, in this case, most of us think that we have um, have the ability to uh, change the paths our life uh, takes. Uh, we think we can choose uh, what we're going to do, and sometimes uh, our choices are accidental. They depend upon things that uh, that are just uh, beyond our control, and sometimes things things are beyond our uh, within our control. And uh, for example, if we're out on the desert, we get lost. If we uh, we uh, read the map and uh, read the signs, we might uh, well uh, see that. Uh, oh well, uh, to get back home, I need to follow that sign. Well, determinism. What is determinism? Determinism is the view that. Um, uh, here's a definition of determinism. Determinism is the view that everything that will ever happen in the whole universe, everything that will ever happen, is the inevitable result of prior events. And these prior events cause exactly the next event and no other event to happen. And what that means is in a deterministic system, um, our future is set in stone. Everything we do is determined by prior causes. It's, uh, it's caused to be exactly one event, the only event that can uh, follow this, those uh, particular uh, events that came before. And so uh, one of the questions uh, that uh, you might uh, have is, why would anybody believe that determinism is true in the first place? Because it can seem pretty obvious to most of us that uh, many times uh, things are not determined uh, by prior events. For example, take my hand. I can make it go up, I can make it go down. Uh, now that nobody's forcing me to do that. Or if I go uh, to, the, uh, to the store and, um, and uh, they have uh, maple bars and apple fritters, I can choose which I want if I have the money. Nobody's forcing me to take, take one or the other. And uh, it's up to me. And uh, we think that uh, nobody could predict, especially if I flip a coin or uh, do something like that. Uh, the future is up to a random events and what I choose. But so what are some of the reasons why people believe determinism is true? That's what I want to go over briefly uh, in, this, uh, in this preface to the chapter. So uh, let me replace this and uh, uh, put something else over here. So I'm going over the reasons why uh, in our tradition, the Western tradition, many people have believed that uh, determinism is indeed true. Well, and these reasons come from uh, learned people usually, from uh, theologians, uh, people who believe in God, and from scientists, people who believe in uh, physics and so on. So, so these are, I, I listed five different uh, kinds of reasons that people have used, have appealed to, to uh, say that, uh, well, they think that determinism is true. I don't think all of them are good ones, but uh, here the first one is God is on mission. God is omniscient. Many people believe that God knows everything, that God knows everything that has ever happened. He knew everything that you would ever do prior to um, uh, billions of years before you even existed. He knew everything you would ever do, every thought you'd have, every time you'd scratch your nose, anything. He knows everything about you uh, billions of years before you even existed. And uh, if that's true, if God uh, knows everything, that he knows the future, and if he knows the future, he knows exactly what you're going to do. 
Well, if he knew exactly uh, what choice you're going to make when you decided to rob a 7-Eleven store, how can you be held responsible for that? And how can you think that you had free choice in that matter if God knew billions of years ago exactly what you're going to do? So that's one. Now, not all Christians believe that God is omniscient. Some of them think that God has given us uh, a kind of free will so that we, we can freely choose to be good or bad. Well, that raises other problems we'll get to later. The second one, and the, I think the, one of the most compelling reasons why physicists and uh, scientists have come to believe in, uh, in determinism is uh, Newtonian physics, uh, uh, the, the kind of physics developed uh, uh, around the, uh, the time of Descartes by, uh, so was that what it was? Sir Isaac Newton uh, developed the laws of physics and Galileo Galilei had roughly the same, uh, same physics. And this, this physics uh, uh, convinced people that, that uh, science, uh, science uh, can explain all, all movements, all motions in the universe. And so uh, there's the bit about gravity. That's the, the, there's a law of gravity that things attract each other uh, 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 in poor proportional to their uh, relation to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distances between them. And then there are the, uh, there's the uh, three laws of motion, like uh, things do not move unless there's some other object, physical object that causes them to move. Um, and every action has an equal opposite reaction. All these the three laws of motion are uh, reducible to one. Uh, force equals mass times uh, acceleration. But anyhow, uh, one of the things that will be on the exam is, uh, one of the things you need to know about physics, Newtonian physics is, uh, it has two postulates. What are the two postulates of Newtonian physics? Well, the first is that everything, everything in the universe, that's including you and me, our brains, everything about us, and everything else in the universe is made of atoms. Uh, Newton thought they were indestructible little things like billiard balls. And the second postulate is that all atoms obey the laws of nature. Well, this kind of a system with those two postulates is a deterministic system. Uh, think of it this way. If you have billiard balls on a table, on a pool table, and uh, you get them all together and you take your, your stick and you break and hit them, if you know exactly uh, the relative positions and, and uh, uh, shapes and masses and so on of these, of these uh, objects in the pool table and the force that uh, they used to make them break and so on, if you knew all those uh, exactly, these physicists say there's only one way they're going to end up. And the universe is just, uh, according to Newton, was just a great big mass of, uh, of atoms. And if you had a Laplacian computer, a, a giant computer, if you fed in the information where all these atoms are and how big they are and so on at the beginning of the universe, you would be able to calculate where every single atom in the universe, every atom in every uh, uh, you know, stor storm, atoms and leaves whirling around in storms, everything is predictable. And that would include every atom in your body. So human beings would be entirely predictable too. And this is taking the rule of law and causation to the extreme. Determinism basically is founded upon the belief that uh, everything has a cause. If everything is caused, if A, events of type A, generally cause events of type B, what that means is that events of type A invariably cause events uh, of type B to follow them. So if you have a causal relationship between A and B, well, when A happens, there's only one thing that can, uh, can follow. It's events of type B. So you just take all the events and uh, know the laws of nature. You should be able to predict uh, what the next event is and what the next one would, would be. And uh, there's no variation. So that's Newtonian physics. Now, of course, Newtonian physics uh, has suffered some damage. Uh, some scientists think that there's some randomness, randomness in the universe. Some things are only uh, only uh, likely, uh, especially on the subatomic level. And of course, atoms are not indestructible things. And there's all kinds of other complications now. But this Newtonian physics uh, supplied the model for determinism. 
There's another kind of uh, deterministic b belief, I think, that we find in something like uh, uh, the science of uh, psychology. Uh, to the extent that it's a science, uh, to the extent people think that uh, there is a science of human behavior, uh, many of these psychologists believe that uh, for there to be a science of human behavior, there have to be laws of human behavior. And people like Bertram uh, B.F. Skinner were interested in trying to figure out what the laws of behavior were. And, uh, and uh, again, uh, they had the feeling that environment and heredity determines everything we will ever do. So if somebody grows up to be bad, either there was something wrong with their heredity or, uh, or they had a defective environment. And uh, that's what caused them to end up the way they uh, were. And likewise, if you uh, end up being a wonderful person, doing everything you ought to do, being a good mother, good father, good citizen, uh, that's explained by an environment heredity that was determined by events that happened billions be of years before you ever existed, over which you had no control. And they are the things that are responsible for you being this kind of person or that kind of person. They're responsible for all your behavior. ENH H is how I um, um, abbreviate that. ENH is just environment heredity. And uh, I'll probably put an extra credit thing up for you to look at um, uh, the uh, lyrics to uh, the song from uh, West Side Story where uh, the juvenile delinquents are singing to Officer Kripke, the uh, uh, juvenile delinquent officer, whatever you call him, uh, officer who uh, chases down kids who are skipping school and they explain to him uh, what there is in their environment environment that, that made them so bad. Uh, then there's something that I call a priori de determinism. And uh, this is the view that I confess that I'm tempted by it. Um, um, this is uh, the view of closet determinists. There's some of us who think it's impossible. It's just, it's impossible for anything to happen without a cause. We just think that the idea that something could happen without a cause is, it's why it's, it's almost blasphemy against nature to suggest that a rock could uh, suddenly start moving around uh, without some other thing causing it to uh, behave uh, in a, a start moving or a change its direction or so on. And even Einstein, who did not, so far as I can determine, who did not believe in God, said um, he was uh, arguing against people who say that these laws sometimes are only probabilistic, like the throwing of dice. He said God would not play with dice. He thought it was kind of a, a slander, a slur against nature to suggest that it could happen uh, in uh, anything less than a totally law-like fashion. Everything must have a cause, he thought. However, it, it can't be, uh, and as uh, David Hume has pointed out, um, it cannot be a matter of logic that a thing must have a cause because it's not a contradiction to say, hey, that stone was moving along at 20 miles an hour in this particular direction, suddenly it just stopped dead and uh, went in a different direction uh, uh, with no cause. That's not a contradiction. There's only one other, uh, so, uh, so uh, we might believe that and presuppose it as, as scientists or say, well, well, if we're gonna do science, we have to presuppose that every event has a cause. But uh, most scientists uh, today, most physicists uh, seem to call that into question too. Then there's one that, um, one that uh, I call, the last one I'm gonna talk about is, um, I call it the Alice in Wonderland determinism. And uh, David Hume mentions that one in, uh, in the inquiry. I think I've got that reproduced. And uh, his argument, I call it Alice in Wonderland because he's saying, saying that nothing could happen by chance because chance is not a physical object with any causal powers. Well, that's, that's, that's stupid reasoning. Um, it's, uh, well, maybe I'll put that one out for extra credit too, but uh, 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 he uh, gives this uh, reasoning uh, in, the, uh, <coughs> in chapter B uh, and, and in the inquiry, but the inquiry is something that he wrote um, uh, quite a few years after he had uh, published uh, uh, his treatise on uh, uh, human understanding, his treatise, The Nature of Human Understanding. And, uh, and he wrote that when he was like 17, 18, 19 years old. He was a prodigy, David Hume was. And he has, 
And I thought I had him on that one because I, I looked at that and I said, that's an obvious stupid fallacy. I'll call it the Alice in Wonderland fallacy. But then I uh, skipped to, uh, back to his earlier work, the one he wrote when he was a kid. And uh, he has a whole page where he's looking at all of these reasons why, a priori reasons why everything must have a cause. And he just trashes them. He trashes them. And so um, he didn't, uh, well, I don't know. Sometimes you know, don't know what to think about uh, David Hume, but uh, he, uh, he leaves you left with something to think about. So uh, I hope that you'll find this uh, interesting. I want to warn you that this, uh, this particular uh, philosophical problem we're going to cut our teeth on is one of the most difficult, I think, problems in philosophy. I don't think it's the most. It's not the most complicated, but it is not an easy one. I wrote a 60-page paper once, and I shared it with one of my colleagues at, uh, at uh, Stan, Stan State when I taught there. And, uh, and he was explaining with enthusiasm what I was claiming in my paper, and clearly he didn't understand what I was saying. <laughs> well, I guess that's my fault. But anyhow, uh, there are certain things about the problem that just make it uh, seem impossible to figure it out. And I think I'm still... Uh, still uh, discovering things that will make it a little more simple. But anyhow, I hope that uh, you'll uh, look forward to this. And it does have ramifications in our life, or it would seem to, because if science is right that we live in a totally deterministic world, and psychologists and, uh, are right uh, that everything we do is uh, determined by an environment that we didn't, didn't choose, it does seem, uh, seem uh, a little bit awkward to uh, hate people and punish them for doing things that it was inevitable that they did and that are caused by an environment heredity they didn't choose. I don't think that is, uh, well, I think that problem has an answer. And I think that in the end, uh, uh, compatibilism is correct. Uh, cap compatibilism is the view that uh, is, is uh, advocated by David Hume and by, uh, by uh, Stace and Ayer uh, in chapter B. Uh, so uh, one of the things you want to do, look for in this chapter as you read the rest of it, is you want to look and see uh, why they think that determinism is compatible with uh, any kind of free will you could reasonably want. And that, as a matter of fact, free will or freedom of choice requires, it actually requires, that you be a deterministic being. Without determinism, you can't learn anything. Uh, you can't... Uh, you can't be said to have any beliefs or desires or anything else unless you're a law-like uh, being that uh, got your, uh, uh, well, that, that is a, a deterministic uh, physical mechanism. So, uh, so I look forward to going over these things with you and uh, good luck on writing your summary. I have uh, detailed uh, objections on how to do that. So, uh, thank you so much and uh, be sure to email me or, uh, 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 post your questions on the discussion boards if you have any, because I will be uh, uh, reading the discussion boards and <coughs> occasionally uh, uh, making, uh, making comments there too, uh, trying to answer your questions there. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, um, have, a, have, a good, uh, have a good day. Thank you so much.